Hi my friend, it's Pat Sloan here with my daily video and our topic for today is spread the love. So we are going to talk about books. It's kind of a book nook topic, but really what I'd like to know is, is there a book you can share today? Is there a book that you got in that's new, a new book? Uh, that you're having fun with, you find exciting. Do you have a, an old book that is your go-to you want to share? And bonus points if that's my book. <laughs> Always bonus points if you're showing my stuff. Um, so I want to show you a book that my friend Wendy Chow just wrote. It is her first quilt book. So she is, uh, The Weekend Quilter is her website. She's an Australian who lives in New York City. And I love how that mix of different living in different countries comes through in her book. So I want to show it to you because it is a really nice book. And I think that if you happen to have someone in your family who is wanting to learn to quilt that has a very modern urban aesthetic, that this would be a great, a great book for them. And I'll show you some features that I like of Wendy's them up here so she's you know a little bit of background of course you know that's always nice to get to know the person who's writing the book um, but what I want to show you she's got a whole section here several pages on all the tools that you need the uh, all the sort of terminology so that's why I said it's really good for somebody who might be just starting out but has a modern aesthetic and you know so this would appeal to them more but what I like back here is that once she gets to the section where she's talking about certain techniques like here is doing binding she has the photo step outs to go with her directions then you come to the quilt so I want this is where it is really nice to see her uh, her style of quilting from her um, her Instagram account and her blog come into her book. So they all have a title that's really fun. Hey there! And uh, rating. So she's beginner. Then she gives you sizes. There's three different sizes for the quilt. The first page, she tells you sort of why that quilt was made, like like the theme of the quilt. So Hey There is all about how when she moved from Australia to New York City, she needed to make friends and that she would always be like saying hello to people just to try to, you know, make some new friends. And so that's why it's called Hey There. I think that that's really clever. Then in these dark blocks, she goes ahead and gives you a little bit of uh, history or research she's done on quilting. Then come the sizes of the quilts. So she's got the baby, the throw, and the queen size. And she shows the illustrations in multiple colors, which I really like that. I think that's really clever. Um, it's a, uh, something that I think helps a lot of people. So I'll just show you a few of the other quilts. Here's Twin Pole. And this one is about pop popsicles. <laughs> you know, so she has memory of popsicles. You know how we do that. We think about things. So these the twin popsicles, and there are the different sizes. All right. So I really like this one called Boat Pond. Uh, when you do this one in the different sizes, <clears throat> I wanted to show you how effective they are. So you have... Uh, the smaller ones, like the baby size, <clears throat> then you get more of these these images. <clears throat> okay, here's one called a landmark, and you can see she calls this one an advanced beginner, which just means you know it's a little probably a little bit more for fabric placement because uh, she's you know has the fabric needs to be in certain spots in order to get this illusion that she's building and so I think that's why it would be considered more advanced because when you're first starting out it's hard to do that kind of color gradations but it's great because she's got all the visuals here so anybody can do it <clears throat> museum steps is super cool it's got sort of a um, I think it's got a southwest bit of a vibe, but it's all about the steps to the museums. Uh, all kinds of museums in New York City, fabulous ones. And there she's done the uh, different colors, which really, it's very effective in this quilt to change the colors out. And I'll show you one more. This is, has to be my favorite called Chinatown. 
and I really like this quilt. Um, and I like these colors. <laughs> yes, I just want to make it in those colors, just like Wendy. So here it is on the other side. Uh, now she does show it in the other colors. I think this one's super effective when it's bigger, when there's more of them. Um, but it makes a cool baby quilt. It has a whole different look, doesn't it? When there's only four blocks as when there's a whole bunch of blocks. Oh, one more. Okay, so here's, here's the Crosstown Buzz. And that's a pretty cool one if you want to do a, something that reads whatever your main color is. So like here, this reads blue, definitely. But here you can see how this reads red with the pops of colors, navy, and then the cream with the pops of colors. So here's a picture of Wendy. Whoops, let me just, there she is. So this is her uh, page um, about, you know, tells about her. And you can visit you can visit Wendy over at her Instagram or her uh, website. You know, so those are the two places that she is mostly, there's a book, she is mostly writing. And on her Instagram, she does some really fabulous photos. I mean, I think she's a great photographer and she does really nice layouts of the quilt so you get a chance to see. And she shows the process of her going through making things. So. Um, it's a it's a really nice it's, she's really nice to follow you'll really enjoy her so I hope you enjoyed meeting somebody new Wendy Chow and you can go over and check out her book uh, with the links below now for the rest of this uh, um, episode episode channel session whatever we're in in YouTube uh, I want to show you how I'm picking the fabric to make my heart scrappy because I was doing this last night and I thought I'm very specific in how I am selecting the fabrics for this so that it does it's not overwhelming and that it's fast. So let me show you this. First of all, because this unit this is this is the pattern and I am this unit is this one whoops, this one right here. That's what that's what you see here. But I am going to demo, I'm going to, I'm going to demo uh, doing one more row on the bottom. It doesn't have one more row, but I'm going to show you how I would pick fabric for that. Uh, because when I started doing this, when I did the little mini one, you know, over here, when I did the mini, I didn't really, you know, I did a little bit of this, but once I started with this particular fabric, I thought, you know, they're, they're bigger pieces, so it's actually more important for me to me to get them uh, mixed around because they're, they're bigger and you see more of the fabric. Uh, they don't blend as they do when they're tiny pieces of fabric, when they're you know, half of an inch. Uh, these are half of a three inch when you, you know, your, your triangle. So I have 10 fabrics. There are 10 fabrics right here that I'm using over and over again. And so there are 10 triangles in a row across. Uh, so I've got five blocks, one, two, three, four, five, and each is made up of two half square triangles. I ended up cutting them with my die cut machine. So I have triangles already made, uh, and that's how, I'm, that's how I'm doing this particular one. So let's, let's get down here on the table again. <clears throat> oh, let me get a drink. So I'm on the bottom row. I have 10 pieces of fabric. And sometimes I duplicate, like here on this row, I duplicated the stripe and the stripe. So that means there's only nine different fabrics across there. And I've done that occasionally on different ones just to mix it up a little bit. But right now I have just one of each fabric. And originally I was trying to do this. Okay, I'm just gonna just randomly do things. So originally I was trying to do this. I would you know lay them out and then, um, you know, I would be trying to very carefully pick them up and go to the sewing machine and be sure that I didn't, you know, mess up the order, you know, that kind of a thing. So I would have these, you know, sort of laid out and pick them up carefully and lay them down carefully. And, and I thought, you know what, I don't actually need to do it like that. I can be, I still need to do that to some extent, but I can be a little bit more free about it. What I want to do is I know what these two fabrics are. So I want to pick something 
that is different. So like this pink is not, it's pink is up here, but it's not like within these four units. And then I generally want to have something maybe a little bit darker with it. And so I'll go ahead and put these two. So like those two will be the, the half square triangle that goes underneath here. And I don't need to position them yet because I can do that after I sew the half square triangles. And so next I might put these two. Uh, I'm just going to lay them down and see how, see how that, see now I don't want this and this because they, that only gives me one rotation position because otherwise it's going to be close to this one. So what I might do is rotate and put that over here. So it's a little further away. So it's one up here, but it's not, you know, these guys. Now there are these two. The other thing is there's these two florals. They are different, but they are actually very similar in scale and density. So I want to be sure that I'm, I'm sprinkling them around and they don't get stuck, um, you know, all in one corner. So let's say I do this instead and here I do the poke that that dot in this one and then over here I do this these this guy and then I have two more so I'll put him out here and then I have a stripe but I don't want a stripe to the stripe see there's there's stripe to stripe so I will switch out again I will put the I will put this guy here put the polka dot there and put that guy there. Okay, so now these five sets, I will sew the half square triangles, and then I will keep them in order. Or you can take a picture if you think you're going to, you know, forget. But they will stay in order, so I will sew them and know that this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. And as them, and when they're finished, then I will do the rotation. So like this one would be positioned like that, and if, and we would go right along you know, when they're all already sewn so that I can see what's going on with them. There we go. And one more so you can see what's happening. No, I have them rotated right. That one's not rotated correctly. There we go. Switch it, right? Switch it. Do you do this? Like you don't overdo it though. That's, we, we get into that trouble, don't we? We overdo, there we go. So now they are dispersed enough uh, for me. Um, I might take another little look at it before I sew them up. Uh, and then these would have been sewn when I got to this point and I would go ahead and add another row. Now, of course this unit is done so I don't actually get another row on it. But I do wanna show you one other thing on the background here is that I did a lot of pressing open so that it was more accurate for me. So I did a lot of, when I put two uh, half square triangles together, I pressed the seam open. So this is a row, so all of the seams are open in the row. And that seemed to work out really well for me. All right. <laughs> So I thought you'd enjoy seeing that, or at least if you have not thought about how you are approaching your um, randomness of fabric placement, it's one way to do it. Uh, and if you have another way that you're doing, I'd love to uh, hear about it. You can show a, show a little sample, yeah. Okay, that is from the pattern for, because you know, I have a goal. I have a goal to get this done before the 14th, it'd be nice before the 14th. So my next section is this one. So that's what I have next, and then that goes down here, and then I can rotate the heart and put the sides on it. For those of you trying to visualize what this is like, so then you rotate it and you put the sides on it. And then I am going to add a little border of some sort, either piano keys or squares, or maybe just plain fabric. I'll have to take a look what I do. All right, my friend, links below if you enjoyed seeing Wendy's book, Urban Quilting, and you have and you love some of the quilts and want to make them for yourself, or you know somebody that this would be perfect for, you can pick it up. Uh, it's a great book. So I love you. Mwah. I will see you online.